Okay, everybody. Welcome to this very special episode of All Too Real 2. I am Michael E. Colin the second, and with me as always is uh, Matthew Haas, co-host and friend of the world. Uh, today we had the uh, great opportunity to speak with actor and writer Eddie Deason. Um, he's a actor you would know from the movies Grease, Grease 2, War Games, 1941, Midnight Madness, among others. Um, he's uh, also the voice of uh, Mandark in um, Dexter's Laboratory. He was also uh, in the uh, movies uh, Rocket Doodle, and he was in Kim Possible, and uh, also he played the know-it-all kid in The Polar Express. Here is uh, the interview that we had uh, just uh, the other day with uh, Eddie Deason. Um, hope you enjoy. We'd like to welcome uh, Eddie Deason to the All Two Interview portion of All Two Real Two podcast. Uh, I'm Mike, and with me is Matt. Hello. And um, how are you doing today, Eddie? Very good. Yeah, it's hot out here. We're going through a real hot spell in LA. It's actually a little cooled down this week, but it's it's still hot. It's it's not in the high 80s anymore, but the high 70s. Oh wow, yeah, that, that's actually I think cooler than what we got here in Ohio. You're yeah. right. I, I think the country's going through much worse than what we're going through here, but it, it, it's hot for me. It's yeah. weird. Yeah, yeah. Can you tell people a little bit about how you got started in uh, acting? Sure, Mike. I um I came out right after high school. I came out to LA. I worked at the comedy store. I did a couple. Uh, bits up there and I didn't like doing stand up. I had a hard time memorizing line. So it was hard for me to memorize my routine. But I worked there three times. I worked the comedy store in LA and then the West. But then I did the old gong show with Chuck Ferris. That was my T V debut. I did that. I got gong by Paul Williams and then uh he was a real <laughs> nice guy, but he did gong me on that. So that yeah. Yeah, and then I got I got grease after that. I lucked out. I lucked out uh you know, they used to have the rule in Hollywood you can't be in the union unless you work. You can't work unless you're in the union. And I wasn't in the union, so I couldn't work. But uh, luckily, I auditioned for Greece. I got it, and they got me in the union. Paramount paid, and I got in the union. So I started out in a good film. Yeah, that's so awesome. I, I really lucked out there, and then yeah. I just started working after that. Yeah, I know I watched uh, Greece more times than I can count. My sister was obsessed with it as a kid, so it was like one of the two v VHS movies we had, and she would watch it over and over and over <laughs> again. So it was fun. Oh, <laughs> after a well, while, that's good to hear. I, Tell I, your sister I said hi, Mike. I will for sure. <laughs> Um, yeah, they, um, so, uh, what do you got, uh, going on now, um, in, in your, in your life? Like, yeah, what, what I have, have uh, I just wanted to promote on your show. I do have, uh, I'll, by the way, I'll be pleased. I'll be my, my pleasure to answer any questions, but I did want to get a plug in. Yeah, I'm sure. doing a Greece, uh, screening. We're having a screening in, uh, Fresno, California next Saturday night. Awesome. It's at eight o'clock. The doors open at six 30. I'll be signing there, doing a Q and a and hosting a screening of Greece. It's at the Crest theater in Fresno next next Saturday, uh, July twenty seventh. So please be there if you're there. If you're near in the Fresno area, please come. I'd love to meet you. Awesome. Love to see you. What uh, what kind of advice would you give anybody that's interested in getting into acting that hasn't um, you know that that is well, interested uh, in starting? Yeah, it's it's kind of like anything else in life. It's it's a dichotomy. There's a good side and a bad side. I'll tell you the bad side. I think most people know is it's very competitive highly competitive field, and you can meet a few knowledge people, although most of the people are great, so I shouldn't even say that. A few knowledge people, but there's a few knowledge people in anything in life, you know, you're going to meet that. But it is highly competitive, so that's a hard thing. If you <laughs> can get the work, it's the greatest field in the world. You get overpaid, they overpay us tremendously. You get way more than we deserve. You meet <laughs> great people, you meet really wonderful people, and it, it's very fulfilling, you know. If you're an artist, you know, you want to communicate that way. You want to make people laugh, you want to make them cry, you want to make them, you know, whatever, feel whatever emotion. It's very fulfilling. It's a, it's a sad feel because so many people do fail in it, you know. There's just, there's X number of jobs, and there's millions and millions of people trying to do jobs, and there's not enough to go around. So it's sad in that way. But it can be a great field, you know, it can be very rewarding. I, I know I've had a lot of great wins in it. I've had a lot of good times. But, you know, you know I've had my bad spells too, you know. I think everybody's that way. You kind of, it goes up and down. And it's it's not a field, you know, Mike, like, a, you know, plumber. You want to be a plumber or a lawyer or a doctor or whatever. You go to school, you study, 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 eight years or whatever, and such, such, you get your cert and you get your diploma and you're that. You know, you're that thing. With an actor, it's not that way. It's very capricious, you know. It's very subjective. What you go through is just, it's individual and, you know, and you, you just go for the test. Anyway, to answer your question, the advice I give, my I always the old James Garner. Well, James Garner said, you know, the guy from the Rockford Files, do you remember him? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he said, he got in and he said, his father gave him the best advice. He said, he said he wanted to be an actor in Gwinnett. He said, give it five years. Give it the five-year rule. Go in, you know, you start like when you're 18 or 20 or 23 or whatever, 25. Give it five years. Give it everything you've got for five years. 
get pictures, go out, try to make all the contacts for five years. Because if nothing happens in five years, you probably don't have it. You probably just don't have what it takes. If you do have something, you'll probably get something in five years. Something will happen in five years. It'll occur and it'll work. So I say, give it five years, and you know. And you also figure five years isn't that big a portion of a person's life. No. You devote five years. You give it everything you've got. And if it doesn't happen, then you go and be something else. That's all. You still, you still have the rest of your life. And five years is enough to devote to it. And you'd always say, I gave it a good try. I gave it a fair try. You know. Yeah, that's that's good advice. Hi, folks. This is Michael Lee Cullen the second from the podcast that you're listening to right now, along with manager Matthew Haas. You got promoted? Yes. Damn it. Okay, anyways, um, folks, uh, do you like the show Superstore? Well, I don't know. I asked the folks and nobody's answering well, me. Because they're not here. Oh, but we love damn it. it. Yeah, we love it, though. Okay, folks, if you like it as much as we do, you're really going to like the Superstory podcast, which is a podcast where Matthew and I go uh, episode by episode and give our little opinions and thoughts on it uh sometimes we have guests sometimes we don't um just depends on how we're feeling yeah and uh you know so if you like this podcast and like our little crazy banter then you should definitely check this out or i might get sad and when i get sad it gets pretty sad yeah, so i can't deal with him when he's sad yeah no one can really so um yeah so, so. check out uh super story podcast right here where you get this podcast super story podcast Step one, dramatic introduction. I am Magus Elgar. Magus that lore Elgar is one of the more respected casters in all of Hearth. The dragon bone plate in my skull probably needs its focus enchantment align. Though don't expect to go under his tutelage unscathed. Well, you know what they say. Pretension can turn intention into the best retention. Nobody says that. No, not really. You can hear Magus Elgar and his exciting adventures. Visit MagusElgar.com to download your copy today. Yeah. Like, so far, like, in all the movies and uh, TV shows and everything that you've been involved with, what is your favorite memory so far of everything you've done? So many, Mike. That's such a great question. But I'd say working with Tom Hanks and Polar Express, because he was such a wonderful guy, and he's my favorite star. So working with him was, like, a real treat. And then another one is John Travolta, because he was such a great guy. The Grease was my first film. It was exciting. And John, you know, being with John, the whole cast and crew of Grease was great. But John really made it special. He was just such a wonderful guy. And uh, I'd say I did a Magnum. I did a Magnum PI back in the 80s. And Tom Selleck was so nice. The whole cast and crew of Magnum was great. And going to Hawaii was like paradise, you know. So that was kind of really special, too. Those are just some off the top of my head. Awesome. Yeah. I love Tom Selleck. He's a, he seems like a really nice guy, too. Um, yeah. Tom super Hanks nice. as well. What, yeah. Uh, what um like speaking of people that you've worked with um if there's anybody that you haven't worked with yet who would you love to work with that you haven't yet? Such a great question. You know, I would say I'll give you an honest answer. He's getting kind of up there, but he's still churning out Woody Allen. I'd love to do anything with Woody Allen. Go in a film and just do a cameo. Get to do a scene with Woody Allen. Get to be directed by Woody Allen. Just to meet him, the experience. I'd love that. Now that's kind of feasible because I would fit in with him. The other one, I don't know if I could ever work in his kind of film, but I would be honored to meet Clint Eastwood. He's he's one I've never come across to meet, you know, and uh, I would be honored to meet him to do anything with him. So those would probably be the two. Now I've run into so many over the years, you know, and it's usually a good experience. Usually the biggest stars are the nicest people as a rule, but uh, those are two I'd love to meet, and I've never met either either one of them. That's really cool. Yeah, and a lot of people like I've asked this question to several people, and a lot of people bring up both Woody and uh, Clint. So that's that's kind of cool. Um, so it seemed like they would be definitely people to work with. Um, yeah, they're like you figure these guys both go back to the '60s. They've been churning out movies since the '60s, and you know, still churn out great stuff. You know, and they just really admire these guys. Their careers are amazing, and their talent is amazing. Um, another question: um, What is uh, what what are you listening to or watching or or uh, reading right now that uh, you would recommend to people that, you know, you're not involved with. I'm just curious because uh, I always like right to Right at this very are. moment, it's funny you ask, I'm watching Rio Bravo, one of my favorite westerns with Dean Martin. I think it's Dean Martin's best movie, Dean yeah. Martin and John Wayne. So I'm watching that. It's my second favorite uh, western film outside of Tombstone is my favorite. That's my second favorite. Awesome. And uh, Mike, to answer your question, I'm reading a John Lennon book. I'm a Beatles nut. I'm oh. reading a book called Imagine about... Yoko wrote it. Yoko Ono wrote it about her and John making the album Imagine. So I'm reading that. It's an excellent read. It's a great book. That's awesome. So that's what I'm doing now. And I'm I'm always on Facebook. You know, I'm on Facebook all the time. I'm a Facebook addict. You can always go to my page and see what I'm up to. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, I, 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 I understand the Beatles thing. I've, I've been obsessed with them since I was like probably about five years old. So I understand that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you, did you hear about Paul and Ringo last week? Was that, was that oh, cool yeah. or what? Yeah, that was really cool because, yeah, he came up on stage. Yeah, I regret not going, you know, because it's right down the street from me. I could have oh, wow. just driven down, you know, or get a ride right down the street, got a couple of tickets for a couple hundred hours. I regret I didn't go, but I'd seen Paul in concert and I'd seen Ringo, but if I'd known Ringo was going to be there, I would have gone. That would have been cool. Yeah, yeah. I saw a few pictures yeah. pictures from it on uh, Facebook on some of my friends actually went to that concert. I was kind of jealous of that. <laughs> oh, man, what a great moment. Yeah. Another uh, fun question that I uh, ask everybody. Sure. What is your... Uh, Guilty pleasure movie, something you might be afraid to admit that you love. Oh, guilty pleasure. I, some old ones, I don't know if you know them. There's one called uh, The Last of the Secret Agents I Love with Marty Allen and Steve Rossi. It's one I love. And there's one from the <laughs> 50s, okay? This is a weird, but I don't know if you're relating to weird esoteric films. There's one called uh, Bella Lugosi Meets a Brooklyn Gorilla. Oh, yeah. That's what it went on. But it was a Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis lookalike. There was a yeah. team that Im- imitated Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. And that movie is hilarious. It's one of my favorites. So those are my two biggest guilty pleasure films, I think. Yeah, I have that one on DVD myself. I've watched it several it's, times. Yeah, it's yeah. great. It's yeah. a great watch. <laughs> it's so bad. It's it's so entertaining. And the guy, Sammy Petrillo, is so funny as Jerry. It's just so fu- such a funny movie. Yeah, they're, they're, that's definitely, I mean, you definitely could tell they wanted to be Dean and uh, Jerry. They were, you know, Martin and Lewis were so big, they probably, I think the movie bombed, but they figured, you know, just put out this imitator and it'll go over. But it's, it's, it's funny to watch now in retrospect. I know Jerry wasn't too crazy about it. He didn't like it, but it's funny for us. Yeah. <laughs> what uh? What else? Uh, like, is there anything else that you would like to tell us about your uh, time and um, working with uh, any in, any projects that you've done or anything that you any interesting stories you'd like to share? Well, um, working with Tom Hanks was always a treat. In Polar Express, he made it so much fun. He comes bouncing in the room the first day. Hi, Eddie. I'm Tom. He comes over and shakes my hand. It's like no s Sherlock. You're not you're kidding, right? And then they, just so many special moments I had with him during the shoot. He's, he's this bigger than life guy. He's kind of like a, he's kind of like a real life Santa Claus. He treats everybody great. He's such a nice, kind man, and he treats everybody great. He's uh, just one of these guys that elevates you. He makes everybody happy around him, and he, he brings joy into the room. He's kind of the closest I can say is just he's a real life Santa Claus. He's great. <laughs> and then uh, War Games work with Matthew Broderick. He was a very, very nice guy. We went to the set together, and uh, his father had just died. I remember, and I talked to Matthew. And uh, he was kind of crying. He had tears in his eyes, I remember, about his dad. And uh, he was a very, very nice guy. And uh, worked with Michael J. Fox I worked with in um, a movie called Midnight Madness. I don't know if you've seen that, but it's a funny little movie. And it was Michael J. Fox's first film. And Michael was a great guy. We used to, it was his first film when he was like about 18. And we'd talk about the Twilight Zone together. And we'd play handball at Disney Studios together. I'd bring a Super Bowl in. And I remember us playing handball together against the brick wall. And he was just <laughs> this little unknown kid. Then about five years later, I'm up at Universal. And he comes spinning up, this red Ferrari comes spinning up, and it's Michael J. Fox. He's he done Back to the Future. He's the biggest star in the world, you know. It's <laughs> funny about Hollywood. One day you're unknown, you know, then you're the biggest star, and that's what happened with Michael. And he was the same nice guy. He was just as nice as ever. No airs about him, no superior attitude, just the super nice guy. That's really cool. I mean, he's, he seems like he still yeah. is to this day. Hey, folks, this is uh, Michael E. Cullen II um, from the podcast that you're listening to right now, along with Matthew Haas. We just wanted to tell you about our great, great podcast Super. called Super. It's called All Too Real. And on that show, what, what do we do, Matt? We, we watch biopics and then we talk about whether or not the movie matched up with the real story or not. So we, it's we, a lot we, more exciting than that though. Yeah. So, 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 so we, we analyze the real story and the real story. Get it? Get it? Real. You know? Yeah, they're, they're spelled differently, yeah. folks. You can guess which one I said which way. Uh-huh. Anyways, um, so uh, sometimes we have guests, sometimes we don't. Um, but we uh, talk about great, sh- great, uh, great movies like uh, Shattered Glass yes. and The Social Network and uh, A Futile and Stupid Gesture, among others. Um, those are some of the ones that we've covered so far, and uh. We're going to cover a lot more, so uh, please uh, subscribe on Stitcher, um, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you uh, find your great, fun podcasts, and be sure to share it with your friends. Do it. Do it. Do it. And make sure you're not afraid to get all too too real. real. Bye-bye. What is your, uh, your, like, favorite film of all time? Hard Day's Night. Easy question for me. Hard Day's Night, I've seen it probably 50 times. I, greatest comedy. I'm a Beatles, not great music. 
it captured Beatlemania, you know. It's, it's, and it's such a well-made comedy. It's one of the funniest movies ever made. It's like a perfect comedy all the way through. And, uh, you know, it's, it's funny about it. it. Most people in their minds, they still, Hard Day's Night was 55 years ago, and they, we still all have that general idea in our mind of what they were in that film. John is kind of the wise cracker, the wise guy. Paul's the cute one. George is the quiet one. Ringo is kind of the goofy one, you know, the, the oddball, the outcast. But we kind of still have that idea after 50 years. Even though they went through all these changes, these are still the fundamental ideas we all have of the Beatles was from that film. We still hold those things. Yeah. Very cool. But that would be my favorite. Yeah. Rest of, like I told you, Tombstone. I love Tombstone. I, I watch that over and over. That's just a film I never get tired of. I love it. Yeah. I love that, too. What was that line? He's like, you're my... Yeah, it's not a great movie. You're my How, how did Bell Kilmer not get nominated for an Oscar? I'll never oh, know. know. <laughs> yeah, I love that. You yeah. know, you're my Huckleberry and all that stuff that he does in there. That's exactly. Just... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's funny. I, I did signing show Mike with him years yeah. before. But, you know, before Tim Center, I'd never seen Tim Center, and I sat right near Val Kilmer. And I was looking at him, and I, I'd seen him in something. I wasn't that impressed. I go, this pretty boy. I go, this guy's got no talent. He's some pretty boy. Big deal. <laughs> and then I later, I saw him in Tombstone, and, you know, he hits it out of the park. He just smacks up Grand Slam. And I, I wish I there, I could have told him what a great actor he is, but I didn't see it at the time. See, yeah, but I'm, he really, that's an immortal role he did, the way he captured Doc Holliday. I'm a big uh, Batman fan myself, and I, I think he was probably one of the best Bruce Waynes, honestly. Um, I don't know oh, about yeah, you're like that, yeah. He yeah. was the littlest one. He was kind of little to play Batman, but he did kind of capture he was, it. He was good as Bruce Wayne, I think, better than he was as Batman, but he was good still as both. Yeah. Um, That's an interesting observation. You're, maybe you're right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, I thought Michael Keaton did a good job. I mean, Adam West oh, yeah. will always be the Batman. Oh yeah, but I thought Michael Keaton was good. I kind of wish he hadn't quit. Oh, I know he was. He was. He was probably the perfect. Uh, you know, modern, yeah, he was modern great. Day. And I, 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 Jack Nicholson was a great Joker. I thought they were a great combination. Those two. So um, yeah, I, I think that's all. All I've got for you right now. Um, that I can think of. Um, okay. definitely, definitely would love to talk to you again sometime. Um, this was this was fun. Um, thank you very much. Let me just say a few things. First of sure. all, it was a pleasure to be on your show. You're yes. a super nice guy, and it was my pleasure talking to you. You're a great interviewer, and I wish you continued success. I want you to have a wonderful summer. Take care. And tell Matt I said hi, too. And tell your sister I said hi. Will do. Think of me when you see the guy get hit in the pie in, in the face with a pie in Greece. My will, big scene. Will do. <laughs> Thank you. And okay. have, have a good have night. Have a great rest of the summer, Mike. Take care. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that interview. And uh, be sure to uh, check us out online and um, subscribe and listen and share the show. Um, and um, be sure to, if you can, um, if you hear this before the 27th, go uh, check out uh, Eddie uh, in fresno with his uh showing of grease there that sounds like fun i wish i could be out there um but until then right now i'm going to say bye bye thanks for listening to all too real 2 podcast a cullen park production produced and edited by michael e cullen the second music by matthew haas subscribe and share the show visit us at cullenpark.com 